Hello everyone and welcome back to Matterhorn. Are you interested in playing some portable Oblivion? Maybe Fallout New Vegas on a plane? Well then, the GPD Win 2 may just be the device for you. So last year I helped kickstart the GPD Win 2, which is the successor to the original GPD Win, essentially a clamshell miniature PC with a built-in analog controller. It had most of the buttons you'd find on an Xbox 360 controller, but the machine itself just didn't have the raw power needed to run anything but the most basic 3D games. The GPD Win 2 comes with a much more powerful Intel HD615 chipset and a revised and refined control scheme that simply feels better to use. I owned both machines, and the Win 2 is head and shoulders better in just about every respect. Even the 720p screen seems significantly higher quality than the original. So, what can this machine do then? Well, for the most part, if a game is about three years old or more, it should generally run pretty well on the Win 2. That may sound restrictive, but if you go into your Steam library and see the sheer number of games that fit in this time frame, well, most of us have a lot. And it also does a pretty good job of running games that are newer, but maybe not as demanding. Basically, any AA game or indie will run just fine on the Win 2. Now, you're not getting Metro Exodus to a playable state on this thing without major tweaks and sacrifices, but for some portable PC gaming outside of a gaming laptop, the GPD Win 2 really is the only game in town. Now, the Win 2 is not cheap. It can be found for approximately $650 online, and compared to, say, the Switch, it isn't much more powerful, but keep in mind, you're getting a full-fledged PC here, so you can do more than just play games. The Win 2 works great when hooked up to an external monitor or playing videos on the go. It has a touchscreen and a built-in keyboard, making web surfing and writing emails much easier to accomplish. The best part is that you have access to your Steam library, as well as much cheaper games generally than you'd find on the Nintendo Switch. Still, the additional $350 between the Win 2 and the Switch is a tough pill to swallow, and well, that's why the Win 2 is a very niche device and likely will always remain that way. Between the Win 2 and the Switch, I've been able to get back into gaming in a big way. Playing a game on the Win 2 can, like any other PC game, be a bit of a chore, so you'll need some patience. For example, getting Oblivion up and running was fine. I even installed some graphics mods to make it look nicer, and the Win 2 was able to handle that just fine. However, since Oblivion lacks native controller support, I spent a considerable amount of time mapping the analog sticks and buttons to certain tasks, and as I play the game, I keep having to reference my key layout. Another example of dealing with older games comes with Fallout 3. This is a known issue with Windows 10 in general, but getting it to run is a huge pain. Even some of the other games that seem to run fine generally will hit bottlenecks that tank the frame rate, which requires some graphic settings tweaks. I can see someone who's used to consoles or the Switch trying this thing out and becoming extremely frustrated. If you're still watching this video, however, that probably isn't you. Anyone who has spent some time modding a game or just tweaking graphical settings to get games to run at a smooth frame rate should not have too much trouble with the Win 2. I just wanted to emphasize that point, as I did have a friend who saw my Win 2 and rushed out to buy one only to realize it isn't quite as plug and play as his Switch. Still, the ability to play a huge library of PC games on the go, combined with my Switch, means that only a certain few games require me to be tethered to my PC or television via a console. I've been getting back into Oblivion and Fallout New Vegas. New Vegas runs especially well and looks great on the small Win 2 screen. Portable Fallout is a great time and makes me hope for an updated version of Fallout 3 or New Vegas for the Switch. Skyrim runs well on the Win 2, and while I do prefer the Switch version due to gyro aiming, you can mod Skyrim within reason on the Win 2. Running the game at 720p, there's just enough overhead to add a few mods and still maintain a solid frame rate. And, just so everyone is aware, my standard for a solid frame rate is about 30 frames per second. Some much older games will run at 60 frames per second on the Win 2 without issue, but remember that this is a portable Intel HD device that throttles CPU usage to conserve power. That said, for its size and weight, there are a ton of games available on Steam that run perfectly on the Win 2. You can expect to give your Steam library a new lease on life as you re-download games you've not touched in years, and can now play them anytime, anywhere. I've been able to get routinely anywhere from about 3 to 6 hours of battery life on a single charge using the high performance battery mode, depending on the game. The GPD Win 2 has an HDMI port allowing you to hook it up to your TV or monitor. You can then use a Bluetooth controller or keyboard and mouse setup from the couch. It essentially turns the GPD Win 2 into a Switch, with just a bit more work. You can simply unplug the cable and, just like the Switch, you can continue gaming using the screen on the Win 2. It isn't as perfectly intuitive as the Switch, but what the Win 2 lacks in ease of use, it more than makes up for in versatility and its available game catalog. 
I haven't even covered emulation, where the Win2 outperforms basically every other portable device on the market. If you are into emulation, the Win2 is definitely worth looking into. Anyway, I have very much enjoyed my Win2 for nearly a year now, and decided to make a video about it. If you are interested in seeing how any particular games run, there are numerous videos on YouTube of other users trying games out on this little device. If you can't find a specific game and want to see how it runs, just let me know in the comments and maybe I'll try it out. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like. If you are new here and liked the video, please be sure to subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for watching.